this week I was looking at I, I don't know some different startups. Um, I'm hesitant to medium. Okay, I'll say it. Medium. Um, my dearly beloved sister, uh, Marjorie. Yeah, you should look up the Creative Onion. She's she's done a lot of work. She's done a lot of writing. Um, as a copywriter, my dear sister. Um, she's she's faced a lot of her. In fact, you know, I should probably call her and do an interview, but I don't. I don't know that she would want to do an interview with her brother because. Well, I, you know, when you're a copywriter, it's very easy to get irritated with everyone. Because copywriters, copywriters are like the journalist who's interviewed everyone. It's 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 like the journalist has an inside. It's like a little window where they can look into what's happening in all the organizations, governments, companies where they interview people, and they 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 got their ear to the floor. They can they can hear what's going on. They know what's going on, and they watch one institution after another succeed and fail and they can see why and as a copywriter you're sort of kind of expected to be the marketer like you know oftentimes a boss will say i don't you know really know what i'm supposed to write on our company website but i'm supposed to have something written so i'll just hire a copywriter to write it the problem is that the stories, the articles, the the news releases, whatever, coming out, the blog posts, coming out of a company website are supposed to be written by the founder. They're supposed to be written by people who know what's happening at the organization. And so they need to be genuine. They need to be real. Writing is a creative process. It comes from the heart. You don't just cheaply just like cut and glue and stick something up there and and expect it to work it's got to be genuine and so here you are as the copywriter you've been told to write stuff for a website but what you think the company should be doing is not what the company is doing you're writing that we focus on quality because that's what the boss told you to write right but then does the boss actually focus on quality so you're out there trying to engage people. Yeah, I'm spokesman for the organization and we're really focused on quality. Oh, well, why is it that you don't actually focus on quality, though? Uh, what am I supposed to say? I'm sorry, I'm not a decision maker. Well, what are you then? Well, I'm just a puppet. See, I don't actually believe this stuff about the company. You know, that doesn't work. But that's what the message is and that's how things come across. And that's the relationship that a lot of copywriters, unfortunately, have with their clients. You get some business guy and he doesn't want to listen to common sense. He doesn't, you know, he, 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 trying to figure out how to sell stuff, can't sell it, doesn't know why. You try to talk to him. He slams, you know, the phone down, doesn't listen to you anymore. He starts losing other people. And it, it happens again and again and again and again and again. And my sister finally got frustrated with a lot of her clients. And I won't say who and I won't say what. And frankly, I don't even know who all her clients were, but she would get frustrated. And it's, it's, it's the same old stuff. It's, 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 you know, the employees getting frustrated with the top management because they aren't making good decisions. It's incompetence. So, you know, when, when you go through that a lot, it gets frustrating. And I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of inclined to interview my sister and find out what she thinks about things and write up a little piece about it. I, you know, but she might be too irritated to even talk, to anyone about that. I just, I haven't talked to my sister much. I'm over here in Asia. But I was very happy that my sister started writing for Medium. Now, you know, medium.com has, uh, well, they say they want to have the discussion going. They say they they don't like, um, I, in my own words, they don't like grandstanding. They don't like all these news agencies reporting with a bias because it all is bias. People want to have a real open, honest discussion. You know, like, okay, all right, I'll see how this goes. Of course, there are a lot of newspapers that have official medium sites, but one of the things medium is trying to do is make writing profitable because newspapers, 
just can't keep getting money to come in because everything that they do, it you know, people want free articles on the internet. And why shouldn't they? I mean, you get a website, it's not very expensive. You get traffic, you're able to advertise something and make money from getting lots of views. So uh, why charge money? I mean, originally you'd charge money for a magazine because printing the magazine cost money. Do it at a little profit and you can have a press that continues to run. Now that goes back and sort of gets me into my whole history of the press in the first place. Originally, you had Gutenberg and, you know, there was the printing press is this big sticky thing with inky gooeyness and you lift it up and you, you put it in the ink, you lift it up again and you put it on the paper and you, you press it. Well, someone in Germany, Gutenberg is generally agreed, had this crazy idea of putting a steam engine and connecting it to the press so it can work a lot faster. And so... That's when mass media came about. Well, that's expensive. And so the press was a piece of very expensive real estate. The longer you could keep that press printing and putting ink on paper, the more that expensive real estate paid for itself. So why not get little periodicals going when when you're not getting the orders from the people that want to do the bulletins and stuff? Have something else go. Hire reporters, write gossip columns. We'll call it a newspaper and we'll just keep it going so we can keep the press paying for itself. And so you work for the press. You work for that giant printer thing in the building over there. The printer machine is your boss. You work for him. So you're an agent of the press. And that's where it sort of came from. Well, the problem is that doesn't need money today. I mean, the the six o'clock evening news would normally take money away from the major TV networks before the cable news days came along. Now, eventually news became an industry all to itself. But after a while with technology, the business need for that stuff is sort of evaporating. And the dirty little secret, the best kept secret about making money from writing is that people only want certain awesome writers And they'll only pay for regular periodicals if it's part of a bigger business model. Newspapers will always lose money by definition. You know, factories do the same thing. When a factory doesn't get its special orders, like from customers making normal stuff, most of the time, factories are filling in little regular routine orders. You know, some factory in Asia would normally make, uh, you know, paintball gear for some big paintball supplier. But when they're not doing special orders like that, they're just making the extra t-shirts for the factory up the road. And they get some money for that, but not the big money. And that's how most mass manufacturing works, including the press. Most of the press's time is spent just keeping the machines hot and running, not actually doing the big deals. It's a loss of money or basically a break even. Now, just like Amazon.com owns uh, the Washington Post, I think the real way for the press to succeed is for people to own it. A company would own a little mini newspaper. That's where I think we're headed. Now, Medium wants to head in a different direction. But I'm asking the question, do the young programmers at Medium have the wisdom and the understanding to watch a real conversation to overcome the past and actually make regular writing a profitable thing. I don't know. We'll see. Now, I'm going to get to the point. Name-calling never got anyone anywhere. Don't confuse name-calling with nicknaming. Nicknames are descriptive terms for friends and enemies, terms like Rocket Man, Debbie, a.k.a. The Shrub, President Hairdo, and Slick Willy. But name-calling isn't objective can't be endearing and only serves to vent frustration from people who can't bring the change they want. Don't call people moron, brain damaged, stupid, or buffoon. Don't imply it. Don't talk like it. In fact, say so when other people do. Calling names is one's own surrender. It's the loser throwing rocks at the tanks entering his city. Don't ever be that guy. That's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.